boy, white boy summer Got your favorite Instagram, bitch, DM in her number Woo. Hit the strip club, I might thunder Woo. She let me beat it, I'm a white boy Dude, this feel light today Please Catch a little higher Get your hands higher Good Good, there we go Squeeze, good Are we talking? We're going? All right, so we're gonna do back today. We messed up last week. I'm 12 weeks out, not 14 weeks out. So I gotta, I gotta get my shit together a little quicker. So just how we started off the back shit last week, we're gonna start with a cable movement just to kind of get everything primed. So I like doing these. You just grab like a hard cable and then just, I just grab it. Fully stretched and then I just pop up and then I let out and then come rock through. Just like that. So I kind of like reach lower lat out, rock up through. And this isn't like a mass builder. This is just to like get everything kind of warm, get the right stuff firing. But the problem a lot of people have with back, and like I was talking like last week, is uh, too stiff. So a lot of people you see these in pull downs or whatever you want to call them, they're like this. And I'm getting lat there, I can feel it, but it's not getting fully lengthened like I'm right here. And then getting a whole lap from start to finish. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking at elbow and I'm dropping shoulder down. So it's that. So it's all right there. And then it's just all the way through. So I'll kind of like position myself in just a little bit. It's like straight down to be here. So I kind of open up a bit there and then I'm gonna lean into that side just a little bit. That's gonna drop my shoulder down. And then how I let out my lat is I just think my, let out my elbow. Cause your lat's gonna fall your elbow. So that's gonna be it for that. So I do like four or five sets there, just to kind of get shit going. But now, so like with my back, I'm trying to get more lats. So I'm gonna start off with a more like lat exercise and like a upper back one. So like last week we had that one, it was that Star Trek chest press. That was like my like main movement for the day. So this will probably be, this is like the main one for today. So I'm trying to get more like lower mid back type of uh, response here. The back's crazy because it does so much shit. You gotta hit it from like multiple angles. You can't just do like a couple exercises in my opinion in the back, you gotta do quite a few. So what I'm doing here is, the best way is just to grab it like this. So I'm, I'm already sunk in a lot before I even start. I haven't sat down or anything. And then I just fall back to where I'm going to be. So I get my hips back. And then so I'm tucked in a lot here, right? It's all kind of engaged. And then I just kind of let up and then I rock back. And I'm not like, see how my hands, I'm like with just throwing fingers. So like, I'm not like super grabbed on to where it's, now you can see my arms engaged, but I'm like this. So now my arms are still relaxed. And that way I can just kind of squeeze, peel back. I like to say peel back. So a lot of it's your grips. A lot of people just grip too hard. And we end up just using arms and shit. Whereas these are just hooks. I'm not trying to like grip the shit out of it. I'm just trying to use them to do what I have to do with my back. So once you figure out the grip thing and the starting thing, it's just super easy. So I'm already in it, and then I just sit down. So I'm already in position here, and then I just open, and then I close it. I 
What you what you don't want to do, I'll show you what you don't want to do. Is you don't want to be like this on a pull down. So I'm gonna grip it real tight. And I'm gonna get like this. And then I'm gonna drop my head. See how I'm dropping my head? So what a lot of people do is when this type of movement that gets heavy, they go like this and then they kind of crunch into it. That's like, I don't know. I didn't feel that in my like lats at all. It's like mostly like rear delt and like traps and abs. So that's why you always gotta keep your head position like this. For back, especially back, man. You can't go too heavy. Cause then you'll just, like you can go heavy. Like I'm a fan of going heavy on like big compounds like barbell rows, deadlifts, something like that. And I'm just trying just to load this shit out of my back. I don't really care what part of it's working so much rather than just getting load on my back. For stuff like this, you're better off just dropping the weight and then doing the right technique, especially if you have a hard time feeling back. So I, I learned most of this shit from uh, Big Mike, Dan Wick. Shout out to Big Mike. He got his fucking shirt on today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see the logo I, now. I'm repping Big Mike. I appreciate all the help. I'm trying to be one of your, like, what's it called? The disciples? Spread the good word? No, that's what I am. I'm a, I'm a Big Mike disciple. So now we're going to start supersetting. So I like this Rogers row a lot. It's really good for lats. Problem is, you see people. Fuck, loaded up way too heavy. I'm gonna go like a more higher seat when I do this one. Cause I want more lat. So you get this, this machine or any one of these machines, you can set up different parts of your back depending on where your elbows go. So when I'm doing this one, I want my hips back a little bit, my, sho my shoulders forward, and then I'm gonna sink in here low. So I gotta have a higher seat for that. So. That's gonna be my focus here. So I'm driving off the chest pad and I'm flexing through when I do it. But this is the second part of the superset. I'm gonna do this first. These are both Rogers equipment. This is the uh, pull down version. That's like the seated row version. So for whatever reason, if I could superset brands together, I like to do it. It's like wearing like Nike socks with like Nike shoes. See, I'm not in a rush, like in my pulls. Like I'm not starting super fast. I kind of just let the movement happen. It's like the same type of speed. Especially on like a seated row. You could really be aggressive at that start to try to get here, but you're missing out on that whole A to B. So it is, it's not just A to B, like there's a lot of shit that happens from my hand here to here. So I'm trying to work on that muscle the whole time. I have to get my feet back a little bit on this. That way I can really load this chest pad. And then instead of like pulling in with my arms, I start flexing my lower back. And that gets it all on my lats. And then I just kind of let out. And I rock down. So I'm not in a rush here, right? So it's the same speed from here to here. Whereas a lot of people just do this. They'll get it. They'll get their feet all the way up here. They'll be leaned back. And they'll be in such a rush to get it back. It's like this. <clears throat> oh, for shit. This is how people do it. And that's how they put six plates on it. You can't do six plates the way I was just doing it. It's impossible. If you do six plates the way I was doing it, you're like have a like a Ronnie Coleman back. Which I don't I don't see anyone here having a Ronnie Coleman back, so. You gotta fix the way you approach your back training. Because with the back, everyone's rushing 
to get from A to B, or in chest, from A to B. But there's a lot happens between A and B. So you wanna use all those fibers and muscle that's responsible for that whole length. Yeah, so back from those days, you gotta kinda, in my opinion, you gotta be a little bit of a thinking man's bodybuilder and you gotta be able to like sling some shit around. Like you gotta do both. But like today, I'm starting off being more like a thinking man bodybuilder. I'm doing more like focusing on the muscles I'm using and shit. And then we'll probably end with like deadlifts where it's just caveman picking shit up and down, which works too. So I, think you gotta, I think you gotta do both. If you're gonna do deadlifts on back day, just do it at the end. Cause if you do like a really true set of deadlifts in the beginning, the rest of your back workouts gonna be shit. Just cause they, it, it just fucks everything, right? So I got my, my hips behind my shoulders, right? And I'm letting out. And then I'm just rocking back into it. So we're gonna stay on lats. So I, want, I decided I'm gonna do this one a little bit more, but we're gonna end with it. So I'm gonna do that uh, Strive seated row. This is a good one, because you could set up to hit any part of your back you want, but what I'm gonna do now, it's gonna be more like mid, lower lat type area. So that means we gotta have a little bit higher seat. Because I want the pole coming lower. And then we're going to use a neutral grip instead of like an overhand. The new one that these the Prime Fitness ones, they have that rotating handle, which I really like, but this is still pretty good. So it's the same thing as we set up in that the Rogers one. I'm going to get all the weight in my chest. And I'm going to arch back. So right now it's all on my, my lat. And then I'm just going to kind of like chest pop and then through. Chest pop, through. And then we're gonna go finish with this one. Before I was a little like neutral with my grip, now I'm just gonna go completely underhand. Just to kind of hit it a little different. And then really kind of focus on just driving elbows straight down. Oh yeah. I just want an even, even distribution from start to finish. So if I were to load this peg more, it'd be heavier in the bottom, which if I do load anything but the middle peg, it's the top peg on this one. Cause the bottom pegs, it's gonna be hardest here at the end, but every back exercise is hardest here. So like, I don't see a point in ever really loading that bottom one on a back exercise. But I will like go like half here, half here sometimes. And that's the, if you kind of want to overload the, the start, which is good. You'll notice I'm not, I'm not here with my feet. I'm not grabbing it and then coming back and then just here. That's easy. That's what a lot of people do, right? They put, they put seven plates on there and they do that. I didn't feel my back. I felt my arms working a little bit, but. No back. Maybe wearing my chain today wasn't a good idea with all this chest supported shit. But yeah, so you see here, so I just get up, right? And then I kind of sit into it. So now I'm on lat and I can let out a little bit and then just peel back.
It's heavy after that fucking shit. What the fuck, Mike? No quality control in Canada, I see. I need to wear it during uh, weigh-in so when I'm, I get heighted more. And like get some like braids. Yeah. That way I'll get like a little bit like a half inch. That's what I need, I need that half inch. Some dude actually got caught doing that. He was wearing a wig. Really? He was wearing like a reggae wig. Somebody, somebody like, like a, it was a pro, yeah. It was like a Bob Marley wig. So like, it was like a lot higher. Cause he knew he, knew he wasn't gonna make weight. So he needed like an extra inch. And he got caught. They're like, yeah, take the wig off, buddy. That's genius, but. Yeah. I heard he had, he had gotten away with it a couple of times. So I, yeah, I think someone kind of ratted him out. So I'm gonna stick with more like lat stuff for a bit for this exercise too. I really like the Dorian Yates row. So it's old school hammer strength, but it's just you get that good underhand grip and you can, you can hit it a bunch of different ways. It's the same thing. We're gonna set up exactly the same as we have the other chest supported shit. So we're using this to get around the pad and then through. And the way I like to do this one is I'll get weighted in my feet right here. And it kind of keeps my hips back a little bit more. And then I can lock in right here. And just rock through. I think we're more supersets. So we'll do uh, this one. I like, not a lot of gyms have this one, but this is kind of like a Dumbo row, but a machine. So, so one arm row here. So I'm gonna really get a lot of pressure on my, my other arm here. And then I'll kind of like dip my shoulder a bit. So when I lock on my hook, I'm here. And then I can just rock through. So on this one especially, I'm kind of like trying to like drive my chest to the mirror over there. So then I'm coming through, I'm like this. I'm not like doing this, sawing wood. I'm kind of rocking through. So I'm, I'm focused on my chest going that way. I'll just see like one here, but like, see I'm like that. And I'm letting my chest come through. Whereas if I'm like this, from there, maybe reared out. I don't know. And it's really scooping. I want to think scoop instead of pull. I'm like scooping back. Because if you think pull, you're gonna like do too much of that, whereas if you think scoop, it's gonna be more like that. I do think it's important to do one arm shit because, especially for back, because like for instance, my right lat, I can lock onto my right lat so much better than my left. So by having to do single arm stuff, it kinda, it's gonna like bring up my left lat more, you know, or like my connection with it. And most people have a connection issue with one, or one stronger than the other. If you have a weaker side, start with that side. And then let's just say you get 10 reps with your left side, let's say it's your weaker side, just match it with your stronger side. And that kind of will help everything balance out. So like I've been doing that for my leg because my, my right leg had all the injuries. So I'll start with my right leg on like Bulgarians. And let's say I do like 10 reps, then I'll just match 10 reps with my left leg. Even if I could do more, I want them to be more balanced. That's my goal, so I'll just match it. Or if you got like a bicep stronger than the others, same concept. But driving my chest forward does, is it stops me from rotating. So I don't want to do that. I want to keep more square. So if I think chest forward, 
it keeps him more square. Less rotation. So now we're gonna do like more of an upper back. So I'm gonna do this flex leverage row. Cause it's, it's more of an overhand and I can set the seat low to where it pulls pretty high and my elbows are out. Weight is down. It's 265. I feel like it's we were 268 last Friday. So six days I dropped three full pounds. And I raised my food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did a refeed on Friday after we trained. And I did a box of frost. This is my go-to like uh, clean refeed. Yeah. I get a box of frosted flakes and then I get four bananas. And then I get two of the uh, pure protein or something. It's like a vanilla, uh, like RTD at 7-Eleven. It's like 42 grams of protein per, I think it's like power or something. I don't know, it's vanilla, 42 grams of protein. But then I, so I, the bowl I do is like, I do a half a box of cereal, two bananas, and I do one of those things. And I just eat it twice, but it's like the perfect combination of banana and like vanilla and like frosted flakes. And it's like zero fat. There's like three grams of fat in each of those like protein drinks and that's it. Cause Frosted Flakes is fat free and bananas are fat free. So, but I'm getting like 500 carbs in on that. Like in like fucking 10 minutes, like easy. So I don't get like bloated. It just kind of like fills me out and like digests through. Cause I don't have a bunch of fat and shit. It's just like quick digesting. So I have that before I go to bed on Friday and I do legs on Saturday so that way I've got a little bit more energy for quads. So I think I'm just gonna kind of repeat that and then keep my diet the same. Cardio, I just, I've been going like 40 minutes but I'm going a little harder now. So yeah, but I love cardio, man. Yeah. I fucking love it. It makes me feel so good. Cause I start my day off with a victory every morning. Yeah. And it's like, I, I had this like thing where I'm, already progressing in my day while my, all my competitions like sleeping and hungover, just getting out of bed, whatever. And I'm already like fucking dominating. Ah, this is heavy. Remember said sometimes you just gotta go heavy? That's why I started bodybuilding was because I couldn't, I screwed my hips up pretty bad from squatting and I couldn't hit depth anymore. Like it was like damn near impossible for me to hit depth and if I did, like my hips would just get like fucking crushed. So there was like one meet, 2017, that was my last meet. I did my squat and I felt my hip go, and I, it was just like my first squat. And then I passed on my other two, so I got one on the board. And then I did bench, and I hit like a PR in bench, because that's what I wanted to do. And then I was like warming up on deadlifts, and when just like, I think I was like here, like two reds. And I couldn't even like, I couldn't get down like here, because my hip was so fucked up, and I just walked out, man. I was like, fuck this, man, I'm done with powerlifting. Yeah. Shit's fucking stupid. It built my, my frame and it helped me handle heavier weights when I got to bodybuilding. The problem is when you first start from powerlifting to bodybuilding, it takes a long time to learn that because in powerlifting, you're A to B. Like it's, you just do what you got to do to get the squat down and up or bent off your chest or deadlift off the floor, right? So you're not worried about what muscle it works. So, and your central nervous system is very strong. So when you go to bodybuilding, it's hard to learn that like mind-muscle connection. Because you're so fast, like you're, you, you lift so fast and efficient. Whereas in bodybuilding, you really want the opposite. You don't want to be efficient. You want to be like, stress the muscle. I've never deadlifted with a chain and do-rack, so I might be hit a PR today. Yeah, this is an experiment right here. Because my body weight's lower. So in theory, I shouldn't be like 
as strong because I'm in like a deficit. If I hit a PR here, it's the do-rag and chain. I'm not a fucking power lifter anymore, so like, I'm not like obsessed with bars and shit. But like, I assume this was a deadlift bar because it's on the deadlift platform. But it's a fucking stiff bar where the deadlift bar is on the fucking bench press. Like, who the fuck does that, man? It's like, but I'm just gonna fucking pull with a fucking stiff bar because I got a big fucking nutsack. I don't need a fucking deadlift bar. Fucking bitches. So when they, when they see this shit, I'm gonna be pulling with a stiff bar, which is like fucking 10 times harder than deadlift bar. I'm just gonna do a single with this one to see how it feels. That is so heavy from the bottom. The stiff bar. I'm gonna do it. I just gotta get used to it. Plus 20, 270 times 2.2, 594, plus the collars are like three pounds or five pounds or whatever, so like 600. 600. Yeah. I think the chain weighs a little bit too. Yeah, it's real, that's why. <laughs> this for like, I think last time I did, like four weeks ago, same weight. With regular, remember I told you regular plates are a lot easier. So like six plates, regular ones, for like six or seven, like. Pfft. But that shit was like dead from the bottom. It's like. <laughs> so you doing? Are you doing classic and super heavyweight? What are you doing? I can't let anybody know yet. Yeah, keep that on a secret. Best physique. Maybe. You want to tell everybody you're doing an OCB show? I might be doing OCB. Uh, yeah, men's physique, OCB. Men's physique, OCB. That's Literally the easiest thing you could possibly do. That's what I'm gonna do. I think you kind of. We gotta re up here. That's what it was. Yeah. I wasn't properly nicotined out. That's fucking heavy, man. That stiff bar is different. What did I tell you though? That nicotine, it was that nicotine I needed. Yeah. That's what got me those extra reps. Now we're done with back. So we're gonna do a little, a little touch up on the fucking arms. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna start a new segment on my stories every day. I'm gonna do something that white people love to do. Yesterday I did, white people love to uh, pronounce target, target. And white people love redoing high fives. So redoing high fives. Because you know how they, they're always like, oh, we missed it. Come on, let me another one. We can do better than that. And then you go, oh, there we go. It's like the whitest thing somebody could do. I got a whole bunch of them now. Like they're brewing in my head. So I think about it while I do cardio. Like if you're at a bar and like you like redo a high five, or you go like, hey, give me a high five, and you go psych. Dude, that one. Oh, I shouldn't be telling people that. Cause that's like next level, like advanced, that's an advanced technique for getting white girls at the bar, but I'll let that one out. That's like a secret. So I'll, I'll do more if you guys keep watching my shit. But yeah, the, the, the psych one, it only works on like super like white girls though. They're not like, yeah. they gotta be like, like Abercrombie and Fitch, like forever 21 type shit, you know? American Eagle Outfitters. That type of level. Birkenstock wearing motherfuckers. What I want to do on this one, so it's technically called like a Scott curl. So it's a, it's a very steep, so I'm using this side to brace against. So I want a steep uh, angle and I'm going to be jamming my forearm against that back pad. So I like to do it. I get my head kind of looking this way, so I get more length at the bottom. Because if I'm here, I can't get that length. So here I can get length, and then press against here, and then I'm just scooping up and flexing. Oof. 
So it's all one speed here. Then I'll go immediately in with the same arm. It's like a concentration curl. So what I like to do here is I just let shoulder get really lengthened here. So I, I, always re I always drop the dumbbell and then I grab it and I let my shoulder get way down because I, I want my shoulder out, off the body. And then I'm just flexing my bicep up. So kind of curl it like in here. But I'm just going to kind of rock up there and flex. So like if someone's like, hey, make a bicep. That's what I want to do, like a bicep muscle. Because if you can't do that exercise and feel it, you, you don't know how to train biceps. So like, if I have someone that like, has a hard time feeling biceps, I'll just have them do these two. Because if you can't get the, if you can't flex your bicep like that, that easily with the weight, all the other shit you do, you're not gonna be able to do. But these two like will put you in position to where it's easiest to do it in my opinion. Because I'm a shoulder dominant person like we talked about last week. So I find stuff to get my shoulders out of it. So now I'll do like FSC7, like we did last week with the chest flies. I probably just can do FSC7 arms. I feel like blowing my arms up right now. So one thing I like to do with these, I like to think I'm almost like, instead of curling up, I kind of like push forward. So that's gonna keep your wrist like this instead of like this. Because if you think curl up, you might just go like this and turn it into like a upper body movement. But if I can kind of keep it here and I think like push this way, it, it, I'm breaking an elbow and I'm keeping my palm like that. Let's do a workout. So yeah, hit us up, hit me up with any questions you guys want, man, like in the comment section. I'll start like replying to them and doing it for like the next video. So I'll have like all week to kind of look at what you guys are interested in and then maybe I'll build my content around that, you know, so. But I appreciate everyone tuning in. So far I got a lot of positive feedback on these uh, videos, so definitely gonna keep it going. But the more you guys kind of like tell me that stuff the more it motivates me and my uh, my buddy Josh here to keep going and making better content for you guys so um, but yeah jo Josh kills it so I'm just here the face with the d-rag and the chain smacking gun but he's the real magic behind the camera so shout out to him as well um, I would definitely book with him if you can but yeah so we're 12 weeks out 265 pounds and then uh, we're just getting juicy for white boy summer. So this is all about white boy summer. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. See you guys next week.